Hi and welcome to episode 113 of the This Is Reportage podcast. My name is Alan Law, I'm the founder of This Reportage and This Reportage family, and I'm a photographer too. An honour to talk to the fantastic Martin Bedell this week. One of the best documentary wedding photographers in the UK, Martin has been in our top 100 photographers worldwide for the past three years in a row on TIR, and has racked up 15 awards from us over that time. He shares so much on the episode today, including his background in photojournalism and working for The Times, photographing Margaret Thatcher, shooting his first all-digital wedding 20 years ago, back in 2002, why patience is key, staying true to yourself and attracting the clients who want you, the story behind one of his specific reportage awards, and much, much more. Um, the podcast will be going on a bit of a break over the next few weeks just because I'm doing my own wedding photography workshop in Birmingham next week and then I have a busy run of my own weddings to shoot in May with a lot of travelling as well. Each podcast episode is a lot of work to do and as well as running TIR and TIRF and my own photography it unfortunately means that something has to give during my busiest times. But I'll try to record and release some new episodes as soon as I can, hopefully starting again in a few weeks. In the meantime, I hope you're well, and if you're shooting weddings or families, or both, over the next few weeks, I hope your shoots go well and the post-shoot McDonald's are scrumptious. Right, over to Martin. Hey Martin, how you doing? All right, hi Alan. I'm doing cool. well. Good, good to hear, good to hear. And uh, where where in the UK are you? Are you Suffolk, are you, that way? No, Sussex. Um, ah. I'm just south of Gatwick. Uh, okay, see, I get confused with that. I'm just still so bad with my UK geography. So, yeah. <laughs> are you originally from more up north, though, are you? Uh, yeah, uh, family. I was born near Manchester. The family was sort of Peak District and Cheshire and that sort of thing. I moved down when I was a kid. Um, okay. Cool. So, um, you know, grew up in the southeast. Okay, nice. You ever come down to the southwest at all? Uh, on occasions, if I can really face the a303 <laughs> <laughs> oh i know that can be a killer that yeah it's, yeah it's quite a road isn't it yeah it is and not many mcdonald's as well which uh which no which, obviously you don't use that road then yeah yeah i steer, I steer well clear of that <laughs> uh and how's the how's the weather with you this morning martin um i had a lovely very wet dog walk at seven o'clock this morning it's a bit grotty yeah. now as well Nice. Do you do that? Do you do that every morning? Pretty much, yeah. It's my routine. Um, ah, that. What kind of dog? Uh, he's a cross between a, la a yellow lab and a whippet, supposedly. He was oh. a rescue dog from Ireland, and um, he's getting on a bit now. He must be about twelve or thirteen. Oh, that's that's uh, cute, though. From Ireland, like you brought him over from Ireland? Uh, I. So I from, we got it from a charity and they they shipped him over on St. Patrick's Day in a van um, the uh -huh. day before. Um, I think from what we were told, there was lots of, uh, there's lots of dogs in Ireland that need rehoming. So. Uh, oh, that's lovely that you, that you did that. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I like a good dog walk as well. I've got a Collie Cross, although we don't know what she's crossed with. Her, her parents, her, her owners, her parents, <laughs> her parents didn't talk to us. Her, her owners said that they, they just saw a black dog outside with her. So we have no idea. Really. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> with you um, doing that most mornings, is that, do you do that because you enjoy it? You know, some people go and walk dogs because it clears their heads or it's exercise. What, what about for you? Uh, someone has to do it. <laughs> yeah. it's generally, I'm the only one who's up at that time in the morning. Um, I, I quite like it, especially going very early. You know, it's now light anyhow, but it used to be dark a few weeks ago. Mm, um, and it is nice, you know, having an hour just in a wood. And there's a couple of sort of big forests there here and woodlands, so you can take him into there and you may not see anyone for an hour, you know, or certainly you won't see many people. Um, so, yeah, it's quite nice just walking the dog and talking to yourself out loud. Do, <laughs> <Not you? noticing. laughs> do you do that? Do you do that? I do, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> nice. But, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to go. <laughs> oh, you can do. That's all good. My wife laughs at me because I sing out loud because I walk dog and um, I have headphones in. But do you, do you have music or anything or do you just, um, no, just yourself? No, just muttering away as I walk up a hill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny, just like people kind of evade you when they see you muttering and walking towards you um they may well they, they may have excused the saying it's the dog and it's really just me i don't know 
<laughs> oh, that's funny. A good dog walk is good, though. And I, oh man, see how bad I am with the English language. A good dog walk is good. That's like the worst sentence I've ever said. But yeah, I like that, and um, I do that most days as well. But I do listen to music and sing. Um, but anyway, anyway, let's go. Let's go, Martin. Let's talk about your photography a bit. Sure. And um, so your background is in newspapers and photojournalism. You've worked for the Times and the Independent, for example. Can you tell us more about that? How you first got into photography, and then you know how you transitioned from your newspaper work to weddings. Um, I first got into photography when I was pretty young, um, uh, but at my school they had a dark room, but I wasn't allowed to use it because my chemistry results were seen as not good enough <laughs> uh, but uh, it, I really sort of got into it um, at university working for the student newspaper um, oh, cool. didn't have a clue what I was doing really it was like a conversation I had with a, a friend of mine who's now a who's very keen on photography he's now a, a feature film camera uh, director of photography you know oh wow and so I kind of went and did the first demo um and they used a picture on the front, the whole of the front, and then they used a picture inside, which I thought was quite arty uh, at the time. Nice. And what I just, was that picture of? What, what was it? Uh, well, it was one of these sort of uh, student loan demos a few years ago, and it was just the picture inside was um, they were throwing the uh, placards by a bin. Um, I was in Manchester, so they're like distinctive sort of bins. Um, oh, I cool. can't, it wasn't particularly arty, but it felt arty. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> they used it, and that. So yeah, I kind of did a lot of that sort of debos and uh, visiting politician portraits, things like that um, for a couple of years. And then I, um, I, that sort of took over in a large way what I was doing there, rather than my degree course. Cause in Manchester, they had this fantastic um, community darkroom, which was really cheap to use um, just in the center of the city. Um, so I spent most two years in there um, working on printing and, um, and then after that, I got onto a course at the London College of Printing in photojournalism. It was like a year's course. Um, oh, cool. And that sort of, um, you know, that was quite a, you know an intensive year. You know, in, in terms of the people who were there as well, and what they went on to do. You know, there's, there's people who won Pulitzer Prize and all that sort of thing. I think wow. you know, they went off to all various places around the world. Um, New York Times, The Independent. Reuters, you know, it was quite a, a year of um, for an intake, um, and that yeah. was quite, that was a great year. Uh, and then, as part of that, you had to do a sort of work experience at a paper if you could. I did a week at the Telegraph, just shadowing a photographer, um, and I sort of finished the course with no real work to go to <laughs> as such. You know, I had one application for some local paper in the Isle of Man or something, which I never heard back from. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Um, and then I got a call from um, the Times. They the uh, they seen my application from a few months before and said, "Do you still want to come in?" So um, I went in on the first day. They'd forgotten about me. I had to ring from the station to <laughs> say what I was, you know, where, where was I supposed to go? And they'd completely forgotten I was coming in. <laughs> That's a good start. <laughs> uh, well, that, so they just sent me off to um, a story that their main photographer was working on. It was a like Pavarotti, you know, it was like a press launch thing in Hyde Park. Oh, cool. But um, I got a picture from that, which the picture editor really liked. He blew it up big and was holding it up in the newsroom. I don't think they used it, but the, he liked it. So pretty much the rest of the week, I was sent out on my own. You know, I wasn't wow. actually shadowing anyone. They're just straight on lower scale it. stories, you know. Was that scary? That must have been scary going straight into it like that. Yeah, but when you're young, you don't really think. <laughs> you're a bit kind of, uh, you're, not, you're not really aware of what you're doing um, or yes, caring. So. You just do it, you know. Um, How old were you then? then? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 22, something like that. Wow, okay, right. Three. Yeah. don't know. Um, Did you meet Pavarotti, by the way? Uh, well, if you say you meet him, yeah, I was in the room with him, but <laughs> he sort of... Uh, uh, but I can't, didn't say I'd have a conversation with it. It was like it was. A, it was it, the, the more of the point was that he, they noticed me. Um, and so they gave me a second week, and I got a front page, and I got, I think about six pictures, image uh, images published. And then at the end of the last, you know, the end of the two weeks, the picture I said, bring in your folio, um, and he, you know, I sort of handed it over, and it, it was pretty horrible for it really. And he just flicked through it at speed and said, right, you can start next week. 
Uh, uh, but you have to go and get a car. You need to go and get a mobile phone. In those days, there were a few people with mobile phones. It was kind of weird. If you walked down the street, people stared at you. You know, <laughs> you had a phone to you. And within a year, it changed. But and I had to go and buy cameras. I think you know, I had to go and see my um, local bank to get manager in the days when you could um, to get a business loan. Which, and wow. I, you know, they wanted a plan. I still don't know how to do a business plan. So all I had was pictures of what they'd published in that two weeks. And it turned out one of the pictures was um, he was a director of this bank, which I hadn't realized he was something else. So this local manager said, did you talk to him? I said, well, yeah, I just did his tie. It's a portrait, you know. He says, well, don't worry about it. You've got your loan. You don't need to fill in a form. <laughs> you know, wow, just from that one photo. Yeah, yeah. He was like, so, and so it just went from that. It just, I had to go rush out, get some kit and um yeah yeah you, you you worked as a freelance but you were effectively tied to the that, that to the times you know uh, man what an, that's quite an initial outlay as well I, I don't know going back to scare were you not scared doing that huge initial outlay i guess it was just super exciting uh it was yeah but, um although you, you didn't buy as much kit straight away as you know i couldn't really afford to so i just spent the next two years literally i didn't take a holiday you know i just right. worked and just about everything was going back into paying off my debts from being a student and like you say building up kit which you're doing it bit by bit um is it a bit because you're not as you said you're working on a freelance basis uh, so mm -hmm. presume so you're not salaried at all so you only get paid if they want to use that your photos is that right or or did they pay you for like each specific kind of like assignment whether they use the photos or not you got paid by a shift so a shift was like a day's work um, okay. And that could vary how many different shoots you'd have that day. So when I started, a shift was £99.50. Um, right. And you got 27p per mile for your mileage. You got paid £2.50, I think it was, for the phone use. <laughs> um, and then there was expenses of um, parking, things like that. Um, right, okay. That's what it was. So from that, you had to then build. Um, but, you know, then when you're in your mid-20s, that sounded great. <laughs> but it didn't really change over the next 10 years, that sort of level of, you know. Uh, okay. So it's cool. a bit different to weddings, really. Yes, that is a bit different, isn't it? But yeah, so so how long did you work for the Times for then? Um, well, pretty much almost 10 years, you know, um, sort of faded away a bit until I said, well, I'm off. Um, and weddings was the way of getting off, as it were. Right. Okay. And well, yeah, I look forward to talk about that in a minute. But what kind of what kind of different things did you cover during that time for the time zone? Because I read, didn't at one point you even had a gun pointed at you? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't a wolf talk or anything like that. You know, a lot of the guys are out in Ukraine now. But um, yeah. You know, the first picture I ever got paid for by a national paper was um, the Sunday Mirror paid me seventy five pounds because there was a riot. Um, There'd been a, a march in Brixton, um, which sort of in the evening turned into a bit of a riot um, in the sense that it's all bricks and bottles and riot police and shields. And um, and I got a picture of they had petrol bombed a police motorbike, um, which I got a shot of. Um, it was all kind of late at night, um, running battles up and down the main road there. Um, and I, I sort of photographer i spoke to briefly and, and said go back to my office and take his art because he hadn't got it um they didn't use it but they sort of processed the film ran you know printed them up and said thank you very much and they sent me 75 quid for it so it was like the first payment i got for that but yeah. um Mad. Go on. so what and what other kind of different things did you cover over those 10 years was it totally all sorts uh yeah it was like news features um you know, you could. I, my my stock in line, cheesy line I used to have, which was true, is that I want, once went from photographing the behind the scenes of the Royal Ballet to a bomb um, explosion that had gone off um, in London, which there was quite wow. a few of those era, some bigger than others. But um, right. that so was in the same day, was it? Or? Yeah, yeah, literally, I got called, you know, stop doing you doing that, go off to this, um, you know, which tends to be the way. Um, wow. So it'd be a, you know, a mixture, you know, it could be doing um, 
a picture in 10 Downing Street or it could be at a conference or it could be um, standing outside the high court freezing all day just for a picture of someone coming out or it could be some of the best stories I personally had was like um, the, almost like working for National Geographic you know but oh, it wow. wasn't quite on their budget you know, I, there was one um, job where they did a feature they, they, they kind of did um, various features occasionally um like a battlefields of england things like that which are great you like a little day out but they had one on um roman ruins and you know roman empire sorry in uh, uh the uk uh-huh. uh, and i got wind that they wanted someone to go up to hadrian's wall i'd never been so i said oh i'll do that you know let me have a go at that and and, they, and this is the way the paper works they said right we want you to go to york hadrian's wall and chester and, to, and photograph the ruins there and you've got two days to do it I had to kind of say, well, you can't really do it two days from London. <laughs> yeah, they gave, they gave me a third, um, and when I got to Hadrian's Wall, um, I was there for a few hours in, in the rain, just as they were building, uh, rebuilding bits of it, which was quite made nice pictures. But they were telling me that National Geographic photographer had been there a few weeks before. He'd stayed in a lovely place down in Newcastle, big hotel, <laughs> and he spent a week just coming out every morning <laughs> to get this one shot of the sunrise. Wow, a bit different yeah whereas i had like three days to go up and down <laughs> <laughs> wow it sounds such a cool varied varied thing to do though did you really know each did you know like the day before what you'd be covering the next day or was it literally on the mornings sometimes you didn't you know you found uh, out yeah you, um, sometimes you get a call the night before and say right your first job is and or you've got two jobs to do tomorrow or sometimes you wouldn't know if you were working the next day yeah so it's certainly right. when i started it was very um you'd sort of be ready in the morning and you'd wait for the call or you call in say is there anything happening today and, uh, okay so um was it like a fight with other photographers as well other photojournalists you know to get the shot and type of thing was it like that or not like that i think some jobs are like that you know you know some some of the situations you're in but a lot of the time you know um it, you know, it just very. Um, mm. It was kind of weird when I started because you were suddenly working alongside people who names bylines you knew and yeah, you knew their work, cool. and then you were working alongside them or against them. Mm. If they were you know, of another paper, um, were they friendly? Um, some were, some were. <laughs> so, yeah, that's <laughs> life in it. I guess that's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's probably the same with wedding photographers amongst them. You know, it's no different, is it? You get on with some, you don't get on with others. It's, it's, yeah. That's just life. It's so, it's so interesting, man. I, I will get to weddings, honestly, but it's, it's just cool. <laughs> and you mentioned very early on with that Pavarotti. So what are their kind of, just out of my curiosity, what are their kind of like, you know, celebrities or fam- you know, important people have you photographed during during that time? Oh, um, you know, there's various politicians, just about every prime minister in the last few years. Um, That's surreal. What's it like at, at, at Downing Street? It's, very, it's quite small, so, isn't it? Or? No, it's massive. It's like oh. modest. It's like a war on those places. When uh, you, when, I don't know if it's like, I haven't been there for a few years, but when, when you go in, you have to hand over your phone and it, they're all sitting on, they used to sit on a tray on a, on a table in the main sort of reception um, entrance hall. But um, I, 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 did, I did photograph Thatcher once, Margaret Thatcher, and she oh. told me off because I, 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 she was at a function and I, I asked her for a portrait and I asked her to stand in a certain place and she, she turned around and saw what I was trying to do, and there, she was an exit sign behind, her and she 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 twigged, so um, she wouldn't be a photographer there. But uh, that's that's astute, isn't it? That is astute. That is on the ball. Eh? Wow, that's the, wow, man! You can't believe you photographed Margaret Thatcher. That's that's surreal. But there was, there was um, you know, you talk to any photographer uh, for newspapers. It, invariably, you do things like the political conferences, and there was one story which always stood out for me. Was there was a. I was covering the Lib Dem, um, Liberal Democrats. This is obviously a few years ago, um, down in Eastbourne. And they normally, with these things, there's like a photo call on the Sunday before it kicks off for the press to kind of photograph the leader and his wife, that sort of, or vice versa. Um, and we'd done that. And I'd been told by my desk after photographing Paddy and his, Paddy Ashdown and his wife on the pier to go and get a picture of the hotel, just a, what they call a GV, general view, you know, right. for another story. <laughs> So I went down to that instead of going off with the other photographers back to the media centre, and I was sort of stood uh, below the front of the hotel, just looking at my cameras or something, whatever. And this voice called out, "Hello, would you like a picture?" And I looked up, and it was Paddy, uh, 
Paddy Ashdown, nearly. Paddy Ashdown on right at the very top, sort of lying on uh, astride the balcony. You know, there's a sheer drop, and there was just like a flag above him and all this sort of thing, just working on a PDA. <laughs> and uh, made a great picture because it was like he had the flag and, and and he just was defying, you know, it was a daft place to really sit. Um, and <laughs> I photographed cool. him and then he said, do you want the wife? And, and she came out and I carried on taking pictures and I'd got a better picture than the actual photo call, but I got it to myself as well. And I, um, I went back to my hotel to dev it up because, you know, the days of film, you had to go sit in the cupboard or sit in the bathroom and try and dev up your film. Oh, wow, right. And I, and I made the cardinal sin, which I never really would do, and I never, is that I told the desk, the picture desk, what I got before I'd seen it. Um, okay. So I processed the film, the blank, all the films were blank. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. And the, oh. the, the chemicals I've been given were out of date. I think just oh. didn't, hadn't worked. Oh, what a nightmare. So I then had to call the desk and say, I hadn't got it. And I got this, I still teased the, the um, picture editor that was on the desk who told me this. I said, look, sorry, I haven't got that. It's gone. Yeah, the, the dev didn't, the chemicals didn't work. And he said, go back and get it again. <laughs> and um, I had to kind of, I walked back to the hotel and I had to walk straight up to the reception. I, um, I said, can I have Paddy Ashdown's room, please? And they just handed me the phone <laughs> and they called him up. And his wife answered, and I explained to her, and she started laughing. She went away, and she came back and says, go back outside. And they came back out, and they posed up again for this wow. project. I then had to kind of confess to all the other photographers, because I had no depth. <laughs> I couldn't process the film. So we we um, kind of shared it amongst ourselves. Um, so <laughs> we collectively um, processed the film and then just um, shared out pictures. And the independent ran it, and, you know, and... Um, and that sort of thing. So, wow. Yeah. That's a cool story, man. That's a cool story. Wow. Was it we? I don't know why I always talk about kind of nerves. And was that seems to be brave to me to go up to and, you know, ask for Paddy Ashdown to recreate the photo. Was that not a bit scary doing that? I, I didn't think I'd get away with it. And I don't, probably can't, you probably wouldn't get away with that anymore, walking up to a hotel reception and saying, I want his number. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was like a, a, a sort of, um, meeting later in the evening which we went to which, um, and he came up to us and said which is the photographer that came out and you know read the picture <laughs> as you know and i put it and he says well well done good initiative and he said yeah. what else? he said he was a better picture than what we did on the pair and i said yeah and he and he basically turned to his um, media people and said up to all you know the rest of us are there photographers and said whatever they want this week just uh, talk to them about it that's cool so that's very yeah cool. but he you know he i think he was he, not sure you get some of the current leaders doing the same sort of thing but you know uh, no no it sounds it sounds like he was a reasonable guy i remember i don't remember much about paddy ashdown i remember a big um uh combat controversy about his his why well, didn't he have an affair or something and I don't, yeah there was something a few years before yeah but uh, i remember the the headline of paddy paddy pants down that's I right yeah. And yeah i think that was just missing image of persona as well uh yeah Man, it's so mad that you've done all that, all that kind of stuff. Do you? We'll talk about the weddings, obviously, in a second. Do you, Do you miss that time in your life at all? Um, yeah, I think if you speak to anyone, who, you know, I, I left the paper because it just seemed time to do something different, and I, I didn't really get on with the picture editor that was there at the time. Right. Sure. It was very different to the guy who'd hired me. The guy who'd hired me was very knowledgeable about photography, whereas the guy who took over just wasn't. Um, uh, so, yeah, it, it, so I probably should have gone back when he'd gone, but I didn't. Uh, you know, things move on in your life and you do something different. Uh, That's right. Yeah, they definitely do. And, I mean, and you're absolutely rocking your wedding work uh, and man. So how, so how did that happen? You know, how did you get your first wedding and um, yeah, start your wedding kind of photojournalism career? Well, the weird thing with the wedding stuff is it sort of happened when I was at the paper because I was getting journalists asking me, to come and photograph their weddings. Oh, right, cool. And, yeah. you know, in that sort of, um, with speech marks, reportage approach, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, in those days, we were shooting on film, so you'd have one camera with black and white film, one camera with colour film, and I think I worked it out on a, um, recently, most weddings you'd shoot 12, 15 rolls, that was it. Oh. 
So you were probably pressing the, tr- the shutter button only about 360 times, something like that. <laughs> Slightly different but that now. now. You know, now that's what's that? That's um, that's about like ten minutes for most people, is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? You know, now you have people saying, you know, you've got to shoot eighteen thousand images. And think, really? <laughs> yeah, that's true. But, yeah, so I, I kind of started doing that, and then the bizarre one was when I went from my sort of first um, booking that was completely separate to anything journalism. They weren't people that knew, knew someone or that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It was just someone completely new. Um, I didn't really have a folio of wedding work as such. I had a few pictures from that. But I actually decided when I, they wanted a meeting as, um, to kind of meet me. Um, and I decided not to take anything wedding. I just took them a folio of stuff I'd done at the Times. That must have been pretty powerful, though. Well, the book. Uh, <laughs> but the, 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 what, went, what was funny about that one was, uh, having shot it, I took it to the lab with the rolls of film, and they started putting the um, rolls of film into the processing machine, so like several rolls at a time. And I was just stood there talking to the owner of the lab, and the, after a few rolls had gone through, the, the machine started making a really bad noise. Um, and we literally had to stop the processing machine, pull it apart, pull out rolls of film and throw them into a bucket of water. And then I had to take them down to the cellar and we washing them out because it just completely stopped. So they're all at various levels of being processed or not. <laughs> and I think we lost about three rolls of film completely. Oh, man. Oh, but the, was... client, the, the client didn't know. Oh, wow. So... Nothing. There was nothing. Luckily, there was nothing that was vital that was missed um okay. and i actually ended up doing the bride's sister's wedding a few years later after that oh wow Man. but that kind of almost illustrates as well you know how people didn't expect 600 images yes do you know what i mean mm, that's totally and, changed i know well it's changed in the last few years isn't it it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger it's like you know um but it's it was a yeah, it's a very different approach. You know, when you're shooting film, you just couldn't shoot as much. Oh no, and and, look, and I guess in a way that must have been, if, you know, if you could go back to that approach, it'd be quite liberating in a way. I guess I don't know, in like an un, un, like an anti way of thinking about it. I know you could say it's liberating now; we can just shoot wherever we want. But to be limited by that would cause us to approach the day differently. I think um, it would, because you can't really, you know, I I, I don't think I ever shoot now. Um, but you couldn't develop a scene in the same way. You'd have mm. to watch it and just hope that when you fired, you got it. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you, there's none of this sort of blitzing 30 frames in a few seconds over yeah. a particular moment and they're saying, well, I'll have that one. Um, you know, um, but that it meant you got images, but it was also, you know, I was looking back through stuff actually recently. Um, it was kind of frustrating. It was a bit like when the early days of digital as well, you know, the, the first digital cameras, you know, I did my first all digital weddings 20 years ago. Yeah, time. that is mad. That literally, yeah, 2002, wasn't it? Your first all digital. And wedding. that's weird as well, 20 years of, of that. But it, when you look back at them, there wasn't much of a sort of, um, th- what we kind of like about digital now, the sort of being able to shoot in appalling light, being able to, well, obviously now with the, with the mirrorless to be able to, see the you know evf being able to um, mm. see what you're going to get sort of thing is completely game changer but mm. um you know i think the first cameras first camera i shot with was a d1x nikon d1x for a wedding and um, you know it had like why is it two or three megapixel sensors right, right, okay. five, five and a half five and a half that was it and that was seen as high resolution camera <laughs> and it was awful it was just you know the color was even was appalling yeah everyone had sort of purple faces and you saw that mm-hmm. in the yeah, did you have to use flash as well because exactly. yeah, yeah constant flash which now you know if i use flash it's maybe a little bit in the dancing but if i can get away with not doing it i don't right yeah mm, i get that and what so what year was it when you were doing your first weddings on film when when was that uh well yeah there were it would have been like mid to late 90s um, yeah. when I was doing, um, yeah, film. 
And you said you were doing it in your kind of like documentary reportage style. Did it, were, you, were, you st- were you doing any like portraits? Were you doing the traditional kind of wedding photography of that time as well? Or, or were you really just doing it documentary from the get-go? Um, I think hand on heart, I don't think anyone really was that particularly. You know, you, you, you did do the sort of fairly traditional stuff. It was, mm. you were desperate to get away from it. Um, and people still even then weren't really booking you for those pictures. Uh, but you still... You know, and this, uh, you know, in the criminal court of um, wedding photographers, I did used to do tilts pictures and things like that. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> but, you know, um, but you would go and photograph the groom with the best man portrait. Now I wouldn't mm. think of doing that, you know, and I don't do it, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was a question of um, trying to not do that, but you sort of, it's what was expected. It's, it's always the constant thing now, isn't it? It, it? People kind of you have clients who say, "Oh, yeah, I really want this sort of documentary look or this reportage," and but I also want. And then at that point, you're like, "That's maybe you part ways, or you, you can mm-hmm. explain." Well, that's not really. Yeah. Out. Um, you know. Mm-hmm. How did then? How, how did you get? You know, how did you transition from working for the Times then to being like full time doing weddings? You know, did you just? You know, how did it happen for you? Did you create? Did you have knowledge of creating your own website and stuff, or did you outsource that? And did you, did it come to a point where you just had enough weddings booked in that you just decided that you're going to quit the the photojournalism? Um, no, I, I sort of in the end, I I sort of final bits of that I, I, at the paper, I was basically swapping days with people because I wanted to go and do other stuff, different stuff. I mm. I don't know. I I you know I'm not. I wouldn't even call myself a busiest wedding photographer even now. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, there's people who get far more weddings than I do, but mm. my kind of thing is what has changed the last few years. I'm getting more of the sort of people that I want to work for. That's cool, that, isn't it? They're, they're kind of more in tune about how I want to approach it. So that's what they want. Um, that's, but, that's the best thing, isn't it? That's all that we can really ask for, I think. What it is, I, you know, most of my weddings come from word of mouth, which because partly because I think my website's so appalling at SEO and Google, <laughs> but I don't know, or they just don't like the work. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when I sorry, go answering your question, when when I started, uh, no, I had a pretty terrible um, website for a long time. It was <laughs> in fact, I, it was about two thousand and eight. If this goes out to someone in Ireland, they can tell me who they were because it's really embarrassing. I had a conversation with a wedding photographer in Ireland who basically rang me up and said your website's not very good and you need to change it and I was sort of in the middle of dealing with builders and I couldn't um and I didn't catch his name um but <laughs> yeah, I I kind of drifted a bit away from weddings so like 2010 I did three right okay and it was only in 2011 I came back to it and I suddenly realized um oh look there were all these wedding blogs I'd never even heard of them and there were all these wedding photographers that I hadn't heard of and Mm. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I, at the same time, I wasn't just doing weddings, and I haven't been since. You know, it's corporate work, and, and I was doing a lot of um, magazine work, especially for as uh, portrait stuff. You know, with um, American magazines, things like that. Um, right, that okay. Was, the word word when I started off doing digital with the weddings is at the same time you were getting magazines who were refusing at that point, two thousand two, to go digital. They oh, really you still had to use your Hasselblad and your color transparencies you know like <laughs> a few years before they um were up for the quality that was good enough in digital right okay and when you when when you sorry back to your photojournalism as well though because you, you always hear stories of well not stories it's kind of known that people a lot of people in other kind of uh, photographic industries kind of look down on wedding photography and they don't actually realize how great and creative and difficult it is at that time you know were people was yeah i guess you know looking down on wedding photographers um yeah yeah (laughs) well you know it it was it was a question of even i was and yeah I still, this does go down, where does it, you know, I still don't like saying I'm a wedding photographer. I really do not say that, no. I, I'm just a, you know, I, I, it, it all sounds a bit pretentious, you say, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm, a wedding, I'm, I'm just a photographer who's there. Um, yeah. I you know, it's, it, I'm not, I think the point I'm making is I'm not that it bothered about the fact that it's a wedding. Um, for me, it's, it, and it doesn't matter what I'm photographing, it's about finding the pictures. That's the interest. 
know, wedding's just the context in which you're working in. That's cool. I, that's a great way of saying it as well. Do you say that to your potential clients? Because I think that's a cool thing. I do. And either their eyes close over and they go, oh my God, what? No, how are they completely get it? And they go, yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, I, had, I remember um, a few years ago, um, I actually had, a, I don't do many meetings. I don't even do many Skype. So, you know, um, it tends to be if someone has a meeting with me or a Skype, they don't book me because I think I put them off. <laughs> but, you know, whereas you get other people, they, they can just, you know, they'll say, well, we want to book you straight away because we've seen what we like. Or, or like I say, um, uh, my first wedding was on Saturday, um, this last Saturday. Um, and that was for a bride who was the sister of a groom from 2014. So there's no, she knows yeah. exactly what I do. Mm, that's cool, isn't it? There was no group shots. There was like three minutes of a portrait and that was it. You know, it, it was just go and do what you want. It wasn't. Mm. Um, so sorry, yeah, I've lost track of what I was <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I was just listening to you then as well I kind of lost track with the, that <laughs> I'm yeah, like I, you I'm, by the I'm way what... a great cure for insomnia this is there's already some of your listeners have fallen asleep now oh no man I'm sick this is great it's really good I just but while you were saying that about Skype so I don't do many Skypes and stuff as well the best ones to me are when people just want to book straight away without any of that they just you know they're happy with the work and and as you say word of mouth though means that you've done a really great job from all those past weddings you know it's a really good Thing. well you kind of hope wouldn't you you kind of hope that that's the best way of getting it it's just a question like all these things is getting enough isn't it as a business to mm. kind of survive you just need enough of the right you know i, I know yeah. i talk to photographers they go oh yeah you know i really want these big sort of glitzy rich weddings and i was like no i don't want that I, and you know i'd rather you know i think i say it on my website i'd rather work in a village hall than i would in this big fancy hotel because yeah, I'm not interested in that. I, and if there's something I can create from something different, you know, that's, that's cool. Brewery, which is pretty good, but um, oh, yeah, that is good. <laughs> that's yeah. good. Um, but uh, so, yeah, it, it's it's just it's finding enough of the people, enough people to book you. If that's the way, you know, rather than you bending to what people want you to do, it's trying mm. to say, well, this is what I do. Does this that, go with you? Well, that's great, though, isn't it? I mean, that's just such a that's just a great outlook on life in general as well not just bending to what other people want you to do and just yeah just doing what you want to do um you've got, I mean, you've got to find some enjoyment from it haven't you yeah you know you've got to and if you if you if you're doing it the way you would want to do something then you're going to enjoy it but if you're if you're having to kind of um bend to what other people expect you to do you're not going to enjoy it yeah that's so true that's so true yeah and i think that's great for to people um to hear that as well Mm. Awesome, man. Let's let's uh, we'll go back to your photography, but let's um let's change tack slightly, Martin. Okay. And uh, do you, do you watch much movies or Netflix? Uh, I do. Um, funny enough, we tried to watch The Green Knight. Have you seen The Green Knight yet? Well, I haven't. No, what's that? Oh, it, it's um it was on I think Amazon Prime. It's a, it's a sort of Arthurian legend thing, but oh, okay. Uh, my wife fell asleep after half an hour, so we gave up on that. Oh, okay, that's not the best uh, recommendation then. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, a lot of films, um, a lot of Netflix. Okay, well that's good. So um, I don't know if you, I think if you've heard an episode or two of the podcast, so you maybe know I've done a little game. And for now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just going to ask you, Martin, some just uh, some synopses and see if you can get the title. Are we up for that? Uh, yep. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, okay. So the first one is an old movie. As a, this is old movie. It's supposed to be like 25 years old or so. Okay. So a pragmatic paleontologist touring an almost complete theme park on an island in Central America is tasked with protecting a couple of kids after a power failure causes the park's cloned dinosaurs to run loose. Jurassic Park. Boom. Yes. Nice. Cool. <laughs> oh, I remember watching that at the cinema and actually being bl proper blown away by the effects in that. Do you know the first bit where there's a bit with the velociraptors or whatever they call them, um, the sort yeah. of ones in the cage? My wife basically crushed my hand at that point <laughs> watching that in the cinema. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Oh, I, need to, I haven't watched that in years. I wonder if it still stands up. Have you rewatched it recently? Um. I think I watched the second one uh, recently. Yeah, I think that, yeah, from what I've seen, that the effects aren't quite as stunning, but, you know, compared to the more recent ones. Mm. 
Oh, I've got to rewatch it. I remember at the time thinking I could just sit through like two hours of them, just not a movie even, you know, just touring the park and just showing mm. us the dinosaurs because like, it was, it was mind blowing at the time. Mm. Okay. Well, that's a good start, Martin. One out of one. That is good. Um, <laughs> let's go on. So this next one is a series. Um, it's not on Netflix. I think it's like HBO Max or something, but it's one or nominated for some BAFTAs and stuff recently. But anyway, it's had about three, a few series. Okay. So the Roy family is known for controlling the biggest media and entertainment company in the world. However, their world changes when their father steps down from the company. Succession. Boom. Yes. That's nice. probably one of the best series that's been on for years. Oh, like, cool. We're only, we're on just the third episode of the first series. I'm really, really enjoying it. It's, it's brilliant. It's so, so well acted and so well written. Oh, those characters are great already, aren't they? We're just three. Yeah, I love it. All their interactions. You're not meant to like them, but you're just meant to be entertained by how awful they are. Yeah. Oh. Really good. Cool. Does it get better and better as well, then? Uh, I think it does, yeah. Keeps going. Cool. Uh, Has it ended now? Or are they still make more? Uh, what is it? on three, haven't they, I think? Mm-hmm. I, I can't see. No, I think it'll carry on. Oh, OK. I that's think there's good. a chance of it. Um, cool. Well, that's that's good, man. Great, great. Two out of two. So, are you ready to get the hat trick? Go on then. Okay. So this is an old movie as well. Again, probably twenty-five years old, or even I'm probably older, thirty. Or, okay. Ted Stryker, a former pilot who has a fear of flying, finds himself burdened with the responsibility of landing a plane safely when most of the crew and passengers fall sick due to food poisoning. Airplane. Yeah, boom, man. That's so good. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good i've never even seen that never seen Maybe it not. Uh, no. it's a bit it, of its time but yeah <laughs> is it good um it has its moments yeah it, it, but it's it's of its day should we say <laughs> <laughs> Cause that is really old isn't it is it like maybe 30 years old or so uh, i know but i am old, older than 30 so it's not that old <laughs> <laughs> well well done dude honestly that is so good hardly anyone gets all three so i'm like i'm like i'm like quite high in adrenaline if you get in three out of three <laughs> that's actually, oh, it's made my day that's great <laughs> okay um okay cool uh martin let's go back to your photography uh-huh. and one of your specific reportage awards which is which is so good man and it features predominantly on your website too is what appears to be a bride arriving at the church. Maybe she's arriving at the church in the wedding car and you've got the reflection of the venue and her smiling and all these other reflections. You know the one I mean? The St. Paul's one. Is it, yes, it's St. Paul's. Isn't it? I, wasn't gonna, I wasn't exactly sure. but <laughs> Yeah, can you tell us a bit more about, about that image? Do you remember capturing it? Uh, yeah, uh, and it's, do you know what? It's 10 years ago. Uh, That's a really quite... Cool, and, and what was good with that image, it actually won me... Um, professional photographer magazine of the year you know award or something it was quite nice because it kind of went out all the categories um it was literally um the bride turning up in a london taxi um at st paul's cathedral um and they were a bit early um and i sort of came out of the cathedral i've been down in the crypt where they have the sort of chapel um and from the other side you couldn't really see it it was all dark and i came around and the door was slightly ajar um and I'm literally, the camera is up against the glass at a slight angle again. So I'm catching the reflection in the glass in front of me, which is the main part you're seeing of the um, St. Paul's. And then you're looking through, you're seeing her and the lights just happens to be nice on her. She, and she's sort of talking to her bridesmaids who are just a few feet away in another taxi hanging out of the door. And then you can see behind that the other parts of the cathedral as well. Um, it kind of works in the sense that because it's black and white, because everything becomes black and white. Whereas if you see it in colour, you've got her in colour and you've got like a big, horrible yellow um, hand grip thing, which is just, you know, that you get in taxis, um, which is on the side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of, you know, it's giving you lots of layers, but it kind of works mostly that way because it's black and white. It's such a cool image, man. And I think for a lot of it might, you know, me included, it's like looking at it. And obviously I thought it was shot through like a window like that. But some other people would think, oh, that must be like, you know, multiple exposures and stuff. But it, it doesn't have to be like that. You can get it. Uh, look, you know, yeah, people have actually accused me. <laughs> you get some strange stuff. When stuff goes online, you know, it, it, I got that when it actually got that award a few years ago. But um, people... You know, I got a few comments saying that. You say, oh, no, you've just merged it. And then you have to, A, you don't realise how awful I am at Photoshop, that I don't <laughs> know how to do that. 
I don't know. <laughs> it's like, and and there was no need to. You, you could, if you were there, you'd have seen it. You know, it was it was clear. You didn't have to do anything. Um, the only thing I had to do actually with that was um, as I'm sort of pressed up against it. It was like three or four frames, if that. The um, taxi driver was behind me, saying, "Oh, I'll wind down the window," and I'm like, I'm like cursing. <laughs> so I say, "Don't," because it, you know it'd be nothing if it. Yeah, it needs that. Oh, that's so cool to hear um, about that shot. Do you do much editing on your work? You know, um, again, because Photoshop, I'm really, really awful. <laughs> no, not really. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, uh, I process. Well, I've started using Lightroom again, but I used to use Capture One. Um, I use a preset that I built with Silver FX, where it was called black and white thing, and then I'll just tweak each image once it once they've been you know processed that way uh, but no more than sort of levels might add a bit of vignette occasionally especially my black and white but um levels curves nothing more than that really you know, i might lighten a few things with a um pan that's it yeah cool cool so good so you, you're not uh cloning in sunrises and stuff then <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I really generally don't. I, my, my daughter's just graduated as a graphic designer. I have to ask her to come and do occasional things because my wife's writing, is a writer, so she's she kind of got me to kind of make some maps for her book, and, and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I used to kind of I just get my daughters come in and say, "Look, can you just?" And she does it in like two minutes, and I'm like, "I've spent two hours trying to work out what <laughs> watching YouTube videos, and I can't get it." <laughs> that's cool. It's a proper skill, that is, isn't it? It's a proper yeah. skill. Your wife's a writer. You say oh, that's cool. What is what does she write? Oh, she she works um, writing books for um, mostly kids abroad learning English, learning English. Um, uh, so cool. it's, it's textbooks, you know, trying to teach them English language. Mm, yeah, that's cool, cool. Um, so, Martin, you've been in the photographic industry for quite a long time now, and shooting weddings a long time. Um, yeah, for you, for you personally, you know, how do you stay inspired? How do you stay excited? You know, for the next wedding. <laughs> Oh, um, too long a pause there. Um, <laughs> how do I stay inspired? I don't really. I kind of look outside of weddings a lot for photography um, and look at other stuff. And, you know, I'm still kind of an avid sort of buyer of books of photojournalism and whatnot. Um, mm, that's cool. I think there's there's a danger in a lot of wedding photography that I've seen at least you know, of everyone's copying each other. Yeah. You know? um, mm. It, you know, I ha ironically, I have a picture like this, but it's not the way it's done. But I can't stand this sort of um, bride and groom leading by the hand, skipping through the landscape, pushing. Uh, me. Yeah, know what you mean. But, and I, but I do have one on my website um, because they did it. You know, it wasn't a question of I told them to do it. They just did it. And it's not sort of overly dramatic, but it was quite a nice, gentle picture in the end. Um, mm. So yeah, but I know what you mean because a lot of photographers actually set that up, don't they? Tell them how to walk them like that as well. Do you know what? Year, years ago, when I was first doing uh, starting digital, I think it was two thousand three. I can't remember what organisation it was. One of these wedding sort of organisation photography things, and it was all about digital wedding photography because obviously it was in the infancy there. It was like I think it was like two thousand three. There was some football tournament on. I remember sitting there thinking, oh, I should have stayed and watched the football and TV, <laughs> but. They had this guy uh, who was showing stuff, and, and he had like a picture of um, someone shot through the arms of someone, and it looked like a decent sort of observed shot, and you know that was all right. And then they carried on. And he showed the next wedding, and there it was again. Uh, and you thought, oh, no, right, okay, well this is not, <laughs> this is not, um, you know, yes, there's there's certain things that crop up again and again, but uh, it just didn't seem quite what i was you know yeah i don't know what you mean mm. but, but it's, it's a market isn't it you know it's not as if everyone wants to um, reportage you know there's lots of people who don't they want the traditional sort of exactly that yeah that's so true isn't it um that is so true people on all different types of things i know what you mean though about like instagram and, and photographers seemingly copying each other um it's a vicious cycle as well, isn't it? Because they see that these certain images get maybe lots of likes and then they do the same thing. And, um, yeah, I understand why it happens, but it's a vicious cycle. Well, it's, it's Instagram likes. Not that Instagram likes to give you many likes anymore, but um, <laughs> and it's also, you know, awards as well, isn't it? it you, know, mm. you know, where people see, well, look, that, that, that sort of thing wins awards, you know. 
there's been a bit of a change of that recently. I, in, I think I'm not talking obviously about this as a reportage, but uh, some of the other places are not, you know, directories are not um, giving awards to pictures of rings on pictures. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know, there's, if people want to shoot that and there's people who want to pay for that, then, then, you know, who am I to kind of say it's wrong? You know, it's just, like I said yeah. earlier, this is what I do. You know, there's, there's various levels in, within reportage. There's various styles within reportage. There's various approaches. You know, no one's got the same eye completely. Um, Boring um, if we or, did, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, but people, some people will like what I do, other people don't, you know, that, and it's the same all over the place in that way. But, mm, that's so you know, true. Reportage isn't a particularly that tighter definition, is it? It's, no. So. Have you ever said no? Have you ever said no to a couple? You know, when you've got the maybe the impression that they weren't going to kind of like what you were going to well you produce for them. You know, have you ever have you ever said no? I have a couple of times, yeah. Um, and there has been one couple that I wish I had. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. Yeah. They were an absolute nightmare. Um, well, tell us more. Tell us more about it. Well, you know, you you, you were almost you, know, you don't know where I but. Um, it was like a late booking um and on the day there was something very wrong when i turned up it, there was like um she'd had a she i was told she'd thrown the engagement ring by accident down the toilet and I, it was all kind of weird the videographer was quite aggressive towards me and anyway i yeah. shot it i was quite happy what i yeah, sent them stuff they came back to lovely you captured the day and then oh then comes the the call what about can we not have more and um, this went on and then um he basically it, it all got just ridiculously dramatic just before I, I kind of got up one morning to go to do a wedding and there was a, a sort of letter of intent to take me oh home. no gosh and he was claiming you know um i hadn't done the picture of the signing which i had but what i hadn't done was the posed up cheesy picture uh, right, a yeah. whole series of things where he just went mad because I basically wasn't giving him everything that they wanted, you know. Um, mm. And it kind of, I think he tried to take me to court for seven grand or something it was. And four grand of it was for the emotional distress that the pictures are causing. Now, wow. he'd already said that I'd done a lovely job. And I got a lot of help from lawyers, you know, friends who are lawyers and um, watch off his, his wife's lawyer, gave me a lot of help with this. And, you know, and basically things like, she said, well, you're saying five, 400 plus images. And I gave him 400, and, I don't know, 50 or 440 something. He says, you've done your contract if you've done 401. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So all this went on. And he tried to, he changed, you know, it was quite an, it was an eye opener in how um, court works, you know, small claims court. And they had like a, a negotiation um, service, which was on the phone, basically just sided with him and i said well if you side with him this is fraud because this is what he's doing because but what i found out uh sorry if this is boring but no this is not this is really interesting. I, I i started digging and i started talking to a few journalists as well he he was like a in business at the same time he was trying to take me to court he was taking his bank to court because the bonus they'd given him was like 100 grand short of what he expected or something i would have you know he lost that i got thrown out by a judge um uh, but what I found was his house details. He sold his house. And then bear in mind, he said the emotional distress that these photographs had caused him. On his bedroom wall was my photograph of the pair of them coming out of the ceremony room. It must have been about two and a half feet wide. Wow. Right. Yeah. You know, um, and literally the day before it was supposed to be in court in the city of London, the, the, the court rang me and said, do you want your stuff back? Because you have to kind of submit all the evidence and that sort of thing. Okay. I said, well, no, I'm coming in tomorrow. And he said, no, he's cancelled it. Wow. So, I, sorry. Uh, well, but that's, it, it's when you kind of read all the stuff that people have got through, gone through with John Lewis insurance and whatnot in the last few, yeah, year or so. Yeah. This is this. There is a something out there that's just quite nasty um, against well. people. What a thing to have gone through. That's horrible. That is uh, that is horrible. But that's so interesting that to hear first count um, story of that. Oof. Gosh, uh, there's always going to be some that slip through, though, aren't there? We can. That's always going to happen. Uh, that's, you know, I've had nothing like that ever since or before. You know, there was a one off, and I don't think it was me. I think any photographer who'd done that. That's just their attitude. You know, that was yeah. going to be. 
Yeah, I wonder if he's still got the, that photo up on his wall. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps he burnt it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, Martin, that was, that was really interesting. That was really interesting. Okay, what, what does it, there's a big question, but what does it mean to be successful to you? You know, what is success for you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not successful, so I have no <laughs> idea. Um, you know, um, what's successful? Um, you sound You sound happy, though. Do I? I don't make this. I always sound miserable. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you sound happy. You sound very kind of like confident in who you are, which I think is a, a major thing in life. You know, that's happiness, really. That's well, happy, yeah. Um, it all sounds a bit cheesy if I say, oh, happiness is family and all that, but it is, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, you know, um, it's having enough of, of whatever you need without, you know, having mm. to, I don't, yeah. Obviously, in the current climate what we have in the world at the moment as we talk <laughs> you know? yeah it's um, mad isn't it the world is going mad yeah. do you know like any co- people over there from you know, i guess it's a different time now isn't it it's a different uh well not from work but through actually through my wife's family uh we do yeah um because yeah. uh and we know some people locally who are um from ukraine as well but um yeah my, my wife's um family used to own a factory there in the night. Really? Wow. Yeah. Um, so when they they had everything confiscated by the Bolsheviks, they were tra- it was like a tractor family, uh, tractor factory. Um, so yeah, my uh, father-in-law he sort of basically got a compensation about thirty years ago from the government um, once the kind of um, Berlin Wall went down. So he set up a trust, a uh, sort of fund to help um, Ukrainian kids get education here. So we do know. Oh, yeah. Um, we only heard a few days ago, but we haven't heard since that um, some of them had basically were uh, one family we know who basically had done 36 hours driving to get to the Hungarian border. Um, <sighs> we don't know anything. Gosh. We have no idea. We don't know if they've got through or what's gone on. So. Oh, man. Awful. Oh, it's just, oh, it's just awful, isn't it? Well, the world is insane. The world is insane. Yeah. Mad stuff. So yes, people, because this will be aired a bit later. But this is we're recording this with Martin now on the first of March. Um, oh, mad. Um, Martin, that that's, seems flippant to go to a different kind of question now, but I've got this one highlighted. So, but, but, kind of, we need to kind of make this a bit more upbeat, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just depressing everyone with no, no, <laughs> stories not. of court cases and, you know. Um, do you collect anything, Martin? Do you collect anything? Uh, apart from too many camera bags, because you can never have enough camera bags, can you? Um, <laughs> I do start to collect um, old cameras, you know. Um, oh, that's cool. That's a collection, but... And in particular, sort of old digital cameras. So, um, just because I find them fascinating to see how awful they were. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I've got oh, like, cool. box brownies and you know, Kodak vest pocket, you know, classic stuff. Um, cool. and a lot of the old film cameras that I used to use, I sort of went back and bought more copies of them. You know. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. How many have you got then? Do you think? Uh, I think it was about fifteen, something yeah. like. That. That's a lot. That's a lot of cameras around. Your wife okay with that? I think my wife would get annoyed with me having that around. I don't think she knows about someone else. So don't. <laughs> don't listen to this podcast. No. <laughs> I, won't, I won't be playing this to her later. <laughs> Do you, you, you mentioned your is it your daughter is into graphic design? Did you was it? Yeah. 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 Have you um have has she or have you got have you got any other kids by the way sorry have you i've got three yeah you got three yeah sorry have they um inherited your love of photography have you you know wax lyrical about it with them are they into it at all um they, they are a bit but um both i have two daughters and a son um so one's just graduated as a graphic designer one's about to graduate as a doctor wow. the first part of her degree you know first three years and then the other one's doing a level um Yes, and it kind of, to a certain extent, but they're sort of obsessed with film, <laughs> and it's just, and we have this constant sort of thing of where they they basically are spending so much money on film, but they love the look of film, which I kind of mm. understand, but I kind of try to say, oh, look, the thing about film was all the really nice films are pretty much gone. Right. A lot of the films you're doing, you're doing, and, and you can replicate half of it, but you know. I think they like. I think what they like is the sort of look from Colin Egg, that that sort of warm look and that sort of soft look. Do you know what I mean? Because digital has become this sort of obsession with everything has to be pin pin sharp and you mm. know, 
and we're all obsessed with about oh it's going to be forty two megapixels that will that will make a difference and it doesn't really you know it it, and it's, mm. it doesn't have to be pin sharp if there's a bit of movement that could that's great you know half the sort of best photographs in the world that have been taken up until before digital they weren't that sharp often right yeah that's at true. all yeah but they're still great pictures yeah and it's not about can I blow this up on the screen and look how pin sharp that is it's that's not what photography is about anyhow but so yeah we had this sort of debate you know my daughter a few years ago she went off traveling and a year out and she wanted to take film cameras <laughs> so it's just no point you know i've been through all that and all the hassle of film and traveling yeah and the expense as well Ex- well the expense is crazy now you know it's kind of but um i'm trying to persuade her um to actually some friends of mine who are photographers at Telegraph and places, they set up their own little dark room uh, in East London, which I haven't oh, been to, but they did. Cool. Years ago. And because of COVID, it's sort of closed down, but they, they do like courses where you can just, they, you know, take you out for a day with a camera and some film, and then you can learn how to process that black and white film and then print. Uh, and that's, that's what cool. I want them to kind of, I wanted to go and do that because she's never seen a print in a dish appear. Uh, and that's the sort of, that's one of the sad parts of photography is that, you know, We've lost that craft part of it. It's not the same when you're mm. sitting on a screen, you know. But the whole craft of um, seeing a print appear in front of you, you know, as you're swishing the tray, is, is was was great. It was like you know, it's like a magic, and it still is. Sort of yeah, I've never experienced that. Never experienced that. Well, this is it. Yeah, it, yeah. When I when I started at the paper at the Times, you used to um, shoot a job. It was all black and white film. So you come back, and there'd be a guy sat in the dark room um, with a big ledger and you'd say your name and your job and you'd write down how many rolls of film and then he'd tell you which cubicle you had to go into to dev your film and how long to dev for depending on how many people have gone through you know and the dev and you go into this sort of little sort of tube and then you in the dark pull your film canisters apart and then dip the film into the big tubes for a bit for the dev and then dip them into the um mm-hmm. Uh, for the fix and that sort of thing um, and then you'd either take, once they're dry you take the negatives over to a light table and pick them out or you get a um, contact sheet made and then you'd scroll on all over on that or with a china graph and it was like um, yeah. a lovely old process but now it's yeah. you look back at the screen and go, yeah I got that, that's alright <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's so different <laughs> but actually even better than that actually, I say that um, it is now you don't even have to look at the screen you just look at the viewfinder don't you, you that's just true that whole WYSIWYG element is awesome <laughs> isn't it but yeah that's got, it's cool your children are into the film though as well because it's almost like it's like an homage to you and your past career as well I think that's really quite lovely uh, well, I think it's a general thing for this age group, to be honest about it, <laughs> to do with me. But I think they 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 love the sort of quality of film. Um, it's just it's going down to you as well, though. Well, maybe, but probably not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Martin, this is this. I, I know I say it all the time, but it really has flown by. It's been over an hour already. Um, really enjoy talking to you, Ben. It's been really great. Um, got time for one more? If that's okay. Yeah, sure. Because we haven't. I haven't asked you like any kind of advice or tips, and I know people would really <laughs> want to hear from you. Um, so yeah, what would be your top tips, Martin, or top tip, or just any thoughts? You know, just to help someone become better at the documentary side of of what we do. Um, I, I think the only, I, I don't know. Um, the thing I learned when I switched to sort of shooting weddings and then trying to shoot weddings in a more documentary way, if that's the right term. Mm. I'm, I'm never a big fan of these terms. Mm, you know, I know what you mean. Cringe photo, way to, you know, we, we all use it. We all have to on our websites because it's marketing, but mm. uh, it, it's still, uh, no, it's patience. Um, it kind of taught me patience. Um, when you're shooting for a newspaper, half the time you're doing it against deadlines. You're in a rush. You, you know, it's, it's fast paced. You, you know, it was there was a lot of hanging around on some jobs, but other things you had to get your picture, and you had like one chance. And that was a good sort of. Um, and you see it in a lot of wedding photographers that I know, especially you know guys that you've got on this is reportage. You the same background as me um you've probably done more stuff than me or longer you know in, in newspapers you can see the way their eye works um because it's trying to contain an image quickly and you know as much information but 
yeah, going back, it, it, it's patience. It's um, a patience of it's it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. And you know, if mm. there's a scene, let it develop put in front of you. Now, obviously, now you can you know fire off 100 frames without anyone knowing with the silent canines. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's probably best not to do that because that's just a lot of work at the other end. You know? That's true. Yeah, that does all I add hate, up, doesn't it? Yeah. I don't, yeah, I hate culling. I just, you know, my, I have it set. I don't know if you have it, but for the mechanic, I have it set up with yeah. an Xbox controller just to kind of do it. Um, oh, it does. I've heard people doing that. Does it make it a bit more enjoyable? It does. Yeah. To <laughs> a certain cool. extent, but it's not enjoyable, is it? <laughs> no, it's the worst, isn't it? Culling is the worst. It, yeah. You know, I, I kind of do it in little stages because I have to sort of walk away and think, oh, you know. Not, not, it's not a reflection on the person's wedding or anything like that. It's more a case of just going through the images, going on, and then going back again and doing another call, and then back and you know. Oh, I know, I know exactly what you mean. And, and it's the bit where we, where we were talking at the start um, about the number of images. You know, it's it's become insane that this sort of, you know, it's like it's like a sort of competition now. It's like, oh, I'll give you know Santa Clyde, I'll give you five hundred, I'll give you six hundred, I'll give you eight hundred, and you kind of think now. You know, I always kind of look at that and think, blimey, I must be really shit because <laughs> I could never hand over 600 images and say, well, hand on heart, those are 600 really good images. Yeah, right, yeah. And, You're and, just really good at editing, though, man. You probably know the best shots. That's what maybe a lot of us lack as well. Well, I don't know, but it, it was like I actually had a few years ago a, a groom who, you know, he wanted a sort of slightly different hours and you know, I, and I said to you know, and numbers of people, and I said I didn't really know how many images his wedding would get you know what would come out of that I, I couldn't really and he said it doesn't matter it's not about the numbers of images it's how good they are that's cool that, that really is the main you know that's what it should be about oh yeah definitely the right images it does it's not about you know i'll give you a thousand I can, you could probably take 800 images and knock it down to 200 and they still tell a story yeah that's so true and it save ourselves a lot of time and work as well well, this is it. I, 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 I kind of put digital photography has made me fat because I just sit in front of a computer now. <laughs> in the old days, you'd drop your film off at the lab and you could go off and, I don't know, play go tennis. Go for a run or tennis. Or yeah, I don't play tennis, but, you know, <laughs> do something. <laughs> but the wedding day that you do itself, that's a good form of exercise, isn't it? It's not, you know, we're not sitting on our asses all day at the wedding itself. Uh, no, absolutely not. No. Um, apart from, you know, the one question I've never heard you ask, or perhaps I've missed it. Can I ask? <laughs> I'll ask you a question. Is that all right? <laughs> yeah, if you want to. <laughs> What's the worst part of the wedding day for you? Oh, def for me, without a doubt, is that I do do some kind of, if the couple want it, some like couple time, you know, so 10, 15 minutes. For me, that's the worst time. What about for you? I I'm not bothered about the couple time. You know, not everyone wants it. And like you say, it's just a few minutes and it's fine. Uh, for me, it's um, waiting for the band to set up. From the, from the tables and waiting for the band to set up yeah um that sort of dead time of, oh that lull yeah i hate the lulls you know i kind of want it yeah you know, but you kind of want because <laughs> you're kind of you know there's a point where from until they all sit down you're pretty manic aren't you in terms of pictures. that's true yeah yeah that's true that's a good that's a good question though is that man i need to add that to my kind yeah, of I, that's going to be a regular question which is the worst part of <laughs> Okay, I'm going to add that. <laughs> it's a very good question. <laughs> it's good. Oh, man, Martin, thank you so much for coming on and talking to me. It's been so interesting talking to you. It really, really has. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Cheers. Well, that's cool. Anyone listening now, do head to thisreportage.com. I'll include a link through to Martin's website and the reportage wall at St. Paul's. Um, just casually dropping in at St. Paul's there. That's quite an iconic venue to do, isn't it? <laughs> it well, funny enough, it's a venue they don't like photographers, but there you go. <laughs> Isn't that all venues these days? All but no, no, but no. Um, no, it's cool, man. And hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll get to meet you. I've never met you. Be cool to no. meet you one day. No. Yeah, absolutely. I'll meet you at McDonald's somewhere. In <laughs> that would be good. <laughs> we should do it. That would be good. Man, thanks so much for your time. Cheers. No worries. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Cheers, bye. You've been listening to the 113th episode of the This Is Reportage podcast. So interesting chatting to Martin. Hope you enjoyed listening. Head to thisisreportage.com for a link to his website and to see the Reportage Award he spoke about too. We now have 113 episodes of the podcast available where we speak to wedding and family photographers from all over the world. If you like this episode, delve into our back catalogue for lots more. 
If you're not a member of the Shepotage or the Shepotage family, check out all the benefits of joining us, including an unlimited number of images on your profile, 60 individual award and 18 story award entries per year, invites to our physical meetups and parties, exclusive discounts, hours of educational videos featuring tips and advice from some of the world's best photographers, and much more too. Submissions are open now to our next award collections. The deadline is the same for both our wedding site and our family site. Submit by 2359 BST on the 24th of May 2022. No poses, nothing staged. This is Reportage. And this is bye for a few weeks. <laughs>